Welcome to Old Fashioned Baptist Church tonight. Let's go ahead and take our hymnals and go to number 52. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, number 52.
opportunity to be in your house. I thank you for a little bit of rain, uh, Lord, as we always need it during this time. I do pray for the summer uh, summertime as far as fire season is concerned. Um, it would be nice to have a, a reprieve from that. Uh, not much for a fire season would be great. But Lord, I know that uh, there's all kinds of things going on in the world right now um, beyond the political uproar, beyond uh, some physical things going on. Uh, there are some some natural, what people call natural disaster type things going on all across the world and even in our own country. Lord, I look forward to your second coming. Uh, even so, Lord, quickly, come, come quickly. In Jesus' name I pray, ask you to amen. All right, let me just give a couple of announcements. Uh, one is this. Um, at scheduled tentatively, a funeral for A.C. Marshall, the family has canceled that. We're just going to kind of do a private kind of get-together, just a small, uh, small get-together. And, uh, and so would you continue to pray for the Marshall family? Um, I don't, you know, I don't know the family real well, and so it's always kind of difficult when you step into that situation when you're trying to do a funeral. But one thing I do know is uh, people need the gospel, so... Uh, so please pray for them. Uh, people need to still get saved. And so pray for the, the Marshall family. Um, July 1st, so that'd be next Wednesday, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a business meeting. Got some things we need to take care of. Um, one is, I'll just let you know in advance, uh, we need to get a lawnmower <laughs> uh, for the church. And so it's supposed to be actually here. So, well, it's already here. They're putting it together. And it's supposed to be ready and available um, the cost is a, a zero-turn mower, and it'll get it done quick. It's twenty-seven hundred dollars, which is uh, it's got an upgraded engine, upgraded deck on it, and uh, it would be the church's that is the church's mower. And, uh, and so instead of borrowing everybody else's mower, I always I, I hate borrowing tools. Just personally, I don't because if I break somebody's tool, mm -hmm. I'm responsible for their tool. I feel bad, you know. And uh, same thing, you know, kind of. If I borrow somebody's mower and things, last year the belt busted and some other things fell, uh, busted on that mower, and so I'm uh, obligated to take care of that. And if it's the church's mower, then the church is obligated to take care of that. And so anyway, um, so it would be good that way anybody that's part of the church to uh, hopefully you don't run into the fence or something like that with it, but <laughs> anybody would be allowed to mow with it, and so we need to take care of that. Also, I'd like to do this, I'll just give you kind of an up. Here. I would like to put some sort of like play equipment in for the kids and uh, at some point in time. And so I like to, instead of, I could try and build one, uh, but I don't have time for that. I'll <laughs> just be honest. Huh? And so I'd like to get one of, one of the lifetime ones because they last a long time. That's why I call them lifetime. And uh, I'd like to put it actually up over on this side, up here. I thought about putting it down there. The problem is it's got trees and stuff uh, in the way. And being able, like if the kids are out, being able to see clear down in there. And so, um, the junior church, if we let them out or something, they wanted to go out and play, they can walk out the bottom and come out, and they wouldn't disturb anything that's going on up here and still be able to play out there. And then afterwards, you know, if people are fellowshipping outside, the parents are outside, they can easily see. <laughs> that's, a, you know, that's a big deal for me to be able to see what my kids are doing, you know. Um, Mostly if they're fighting each other and that kind of thing. But uh, anyway, uh, and so we'll talk about that. And then I've got three missionaries I'd like to be able to take on. Um, and I did some checking. If you haven't, by the way, if you haven't handed in uh, this, you can still do that. But I did some checking as far as finances. We should be able to, with ease, uh, take these three on. And the King family is definitely wor uh, worthy. Brother Neil was just here preaching. He's, he's definitely... Worthy and then the Folkers, and uh, they are doing all of them are doing a great job and uh, staying with the stuff. And so, uh, and we, we should have, I believe, room for more during the year, um, even within the next year. Already looking at scheduling somebody in January of 2021, <laughs> 2021, and uh, looking, looking at that. So, we should have that, and I want to be able to. That's what we're doing, right? That's what we're supposed to do is get more people out. So we want to be able to do that. So those are a few things. Also, uh, one last thing just to kind of update you there. Uh, <clears throat> for the, my pitch with our clerk, so they don't have a clerk. <laughs> and so I'd like to put my wife in the place there as, as clerk because that way we have the rest.
records right with us, and I can look at it at any time, that kind of thing. And uh, she does good. She was taught shorthanded. Was it shorthanded or what was it? Speed writing in, in college. So she can basically write in a foreign language that I can't really read. But she can take the notes real quick, almost word for word uh, there, and then get it back, transfer uh, that over. But anyway, I'd like to be able to do those two things. I really, I said all that, but it really shouldn't take very long. I, I, don't, I don't believe, but I thought I'd give you an update what's going on there. And don't forget, this Sunday, this Sunday, it's High Five Sunday. So we'll get the bus route uh, rolling there and uh, get the kids back. And uh, we're just going to have a good time with them. And uh, let's make, make sure we make them feel welcome and uh, let them know that we love them and, and we miss them and all those types of things. And then the following Sunday, I can't believe it, it just seems like summer just, just once it started, I mean, it just started, and all, to, in my mind, it's like already almost over. Does that, does that make sense? And, uh, but we, we're going to do God and Country Sunday on the 5th. We want to do some special things on the 5th of July, so we'll be praying about that. All right, I don't think I have any other announcements tonight. Let's go to number 142. I feel like traveling on. 6, and you've been sitting, and if you're able to tonight, let's stretch our legs a little bit, and let's stand for the reading of God's Word tonight, Matthew chapter number 6, Matthew chapter number 6, I'm going to try and get right into it, I'm excited about tonight, hopefully I can uh, get it across the way uh, I believe the Lord wants it to be intended, Matthew chapter number 6, starting in verse number 9, the Bible says, after this man, and therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We're going to focus in on verse number 10. Let me read that again. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. And I ask tonight that you would fill me with your spirit. Lord, I need your help desperately. Lord, I pray this would be an encouragement, a strengthening uh, to the people that are here tonight. And those that would be listening online, I, I do pray that it would help them and, and strengthen them and encourage them. Father, we live, as you know, we live in these times. Uh, you call them perilous times the last days, and uh, sometimes if we look at it, we can be very discouraged, but Lord, as your word, as we look at your word, it's actually not discouraging, it's very encouraging, and uh, it's soon that we get to see you face to face, and I long for that, but until that time comes, we have much to do, so Lord, I pray you 
enable us, strengthen us to do it. Father, may you be glorified in Jesus' name. I pray and ask these things. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. When it comes to studying the Word of God, the Bible, there's some simple questions we can ask in order to get better understanding of the Scriptures. Uh, these questions are really learned in grade, grade school so that young people can understand the information that they are reading a little bit better. It's, it's, these are the questions. Who, what, when, where, how, and why. Those questions. And uh, those simple questions right there, if you'll ask those while you're reading the scriptures, it'll actually open things up to you every once in a while. Uh, when, in this passage, we know uh, from what's taking place in chapter number 5, uh, because that's the beginning of the sermon, to whom Jesus is speaking. Uh, he's speaking to his disciples. We know that he is the one doing the speaking. Uh, we know that where he's speaking, from the mount, uh, the mountain, as it says in chapter 5, verse number 1. Uh, we know approximately when. It was after he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and then he was tempted of the devil. He came out there, and he, it was the early part of his ministry here. We know that he was preaching. That's the how, right? That's the how. And uh, we know that he was preaching uh, <clears throat> what he was preaching, what it entails, because the whole sermon is recorded. Now, we have particular insight to the session that we're looking at uh, tonight, which talks about prayer. Now, there's more, in the, obviously, in the sermon. But there's one question that may help more than any concerning this statement that we're going to look at tonight, it says, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. And I thought about, okay, so we know the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, but why does he say to pray, thy kingdom come? Why would he say that particular thing? I thought that was pretty interesting uh, that, the, that the Lord Jesus Christ said, now pray after this manner, and he says, thy kingdom come. Ask, uh, ask the Father for the return, the kingdom to come quickly. And so why would, he, why would he say that? Now, it's been prophesied, hasn't it? been prophesied uh, way back in the Old Testament. You look in the, uh, in the book of Zechariah especially, and uh, you look at Daniel, right? And it talks about, a lot about the kingdom. It talks about the end times, especially those couple books. Now, Ezekiel does too, and Isaiah does too. All the prophets really mention it. But those two particular books, I mean, you really look at those and, wow, here it is. And it ties in so much with the book of Revelation, Right? And, uh, but here it says, thy kingdom come. So why? Why would we pray for the kingdom to come? So that's why I entitled the message tonight, Why Pray for the Kingdom to Come? Why pray for the kingdom to come? Why is that so important in our prayer life? Well, number one is this, because it is a prayer that we know will get answered. It's a prayer that we know will get answered. Take your Bibles tonight and go to Matthew chapter number 16. And I'm going to have you flip around just a little bit tonight. It's, some, it's good to hear the ruffling of the Word of God. The pages uh, get turned it's every once in a while. I like, as a preacher, I like to hear it. I like to do it, and I like to hear it. Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 28 says, Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now we understand there's three particular disciples that got to see the Lord Jesus Christ Transfigured a picture of they got a glimpse of the kingdom, right? They got a glimpse of it. Just a moment in time, they got a glimpse of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ glorified. Now, hold on. He asked them to pray for the kingdom before that. And so they I, I believe the disciples prayed for it. I believe that they must have put that into practice, and three of them got to see it firsthand. So we know it's a prayer that will get answered in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 3. The Bible says, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, and came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So they're asking about when's it going to come? You jump down a little bit later in the passage, down to chapter, or verse 27, it says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever, uh, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man 
coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Hey, he's talking about the kingdom coming, the kingdom come, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, if we pray for this one, hey, you know it's a prayer that'll get answered. I don't want you, but I like prayers that get answered. Here's one we can guarantee. You can bank on it. You can put that one in your financial, spiritual bank. Hey, he's coming again. You might as well pray for it. Hey, that'll encourage you. Say, hey, put that on my prayer list. Thy kingdom come. Lord, I want you to come back. And you can get encouraged. Hey, God is going to answer that prayer. We know this is a prayer that is going to get answered. I give that to you just simply because every once in a while, while we're praying, we think, does God ever answer our prayers? Is he ever listening to us? Hey, well, this one we know. It's guaranteed. He wrote it down. This is a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, it's always a good idea when it comes to your prayer life. Go find the promises that are written in the Word of God. Promises to you. Promises to me. Promises there uh, from the past. Promises uh, that are uh, currently right now, that are applicable right now. And promises for the future. And pray over those things because you know God keeps His Word. Hey, that all excites you in your prayer life. We're talking about prayer, aren't we? And uh, I don't want you to get discouraged in your prayer life. I want you to be encouraged to pray more. So pray for things you know God's going to answer. And he says, hey, listen, thy kingdom come. So number one, because it is a prayer that we know will get answered. Number two, I believe this is an important prayer. Uh, and why should we pray for the kingdom to come? Is so that it will create a zealousness in our life. It will create a zealousness in our life. This, this is why we should pray this. Uh, so he tells them to pray for it. That means you got to know about the second coming, don't you? Uh, so we were, uh, I said something about Matthew chapter number 24. Now go to Matthew chapter number 24. And I want you to bear with me tonight. I'm going to read several verses because this, this chapter, basically the whole chapter, talks about the second coming. I want you to listen to it for a moment. I want your, uh, your eyes to focus on it. I want your heart to get involved with it. I want you to hear the words uh, which are spoken here concerning uh, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom that's coming. And verse number one says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See not all these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be, one, uh, not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Of course, there's a lot of prophecy going on right there, okay? There's very quick future coming there with the temple being destroyed, right? Uh, but it's also talking about the abomination of desolation that will happen in the future. Okay, uh, verse number three, it says, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It's a sign of the second coming. False prophets, false Christs, okay? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Sound familiar? See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, I don't keep track of all this. There's some people that sit down and they watch all this all, all the time. But if you go on every once in a while and find out what's going on around the world, I'm talking about like earthquakes and things like that. and diver I mean, it's going on all the time. In fact, California just got hit with a 5 point, I think it was a 5.9 or a 5.7 earthquake. Woo. Okay. That, and that's just, I mean, just recent. And he said, well, that's California. They, you know, we're ready for them to fall in, right? <laughs> How about, hold on, Montana here, you know, we have more earthquakes here than, than California has. Yeah. We just can't feel them all the time, right? And uh, hey, we, we live, we live in the rock, we live on fault lines, <laughs> right near them. Of course, not too far from here is Quake Lake, right? And we understand what took place there. I mean, the whole place just <laughs> sunk, right? And uh, because of earth, hey, don't think it couldn't happen. Yeah. All these have to come. There's going to be an increase in these things. And you got nation that's divided against nation, rising against uh, one another. We see all of this. And uh, it says, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. 
They say, I thought, preacher, you were trying to encourage us tonight. It says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound. Do we see that? Do we see it happening? Iniquity shall abound. And the love of many shall wax. What's that word? Cold. 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 You know, we don't see a rise in love right now. We see a rise in hatred. We see a rise in anger. We see a rise in violence. Now, they'll put it underneath, well, you got to love somebody. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it interesting? Verse 13 says, But he, uh, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And let them uh, which be in, in Judah uh, flee into or Judea uh, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, uh, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. So what's going on right now where we think, man, the world's upside down. It's putting some heat on the tribulation. No, this is no, this is just this is just a warm up. This is just a warm up. This isn't the great tribulation. It says, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now that's an interesting statement. It says, <laughs> since what the beginning? There hasn't there won't, there hasn't been a tribulation uh, since the beginning of the world to this time. We're talking about like in the days of Noah. I thought that was pretty much tribulation, don't you think? I mean, the whole world was destroyed in a flood. But what's coming doesn't hold a candle to what happened then. Wow. Now, the reason I'm giving it, you say, well, that's pretty negative. That's not encouraging. Hold on. It ought to create a zealousness for it. I'm talking about, hey, we got neighbors that may go through this. We got family members that may go through this. Hey, we got people uh, that we work with that may go through this if they don't hear the gospel and receive Christ as Savior. There ought to be a zealousness. Now, hey, if we're going to pray for the kingdom to come, hey, these things have to happen before the kingdom comes. I'm talking about all of this has to set uh, get set in place before Jesus comes back. I'm not about the seven years of tribulation. I'm talking about when a third of the world dies. Dies. They think this virus is bad. This doesn't hold a candle to what's coming. Right. Now, I'm, tr I'm not trying to be there. I'm talking, I'm talking about it's time to be zealous for it. Hey, we got people out there that are be zealous right now. Right now as I'm speaking, uh, they're, they got megaphones and they got signs and they're yelling and screaming and breaking things and blowing things up. They're zealous for it. And Christians sit around twirling their thumbs. And, you know, they think, hey, somebody would be out there nuts if they had a sign saying, hey, 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 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hey, it's at hand. It's at hand. We ought to be zealous for we ought to be zealous, right? Why are we not so zealous for this? Maybe it's because we don't pray for the kingdom. Because we're not thinking about it. Our mind's not there. Hey, if our mind is there, our heart is there, we're praying for it, saying, Lord, come on back, come on back. Maybe we'll be zealous uh, in our life for the cause of Christ. Hey, listen, uh, verse number 22 says, Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the uh, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. There will be some people saved during the tribulation period. And he says, hey, listen, we're going to shorten the days. I'm not going to make it so long. By the way, God would have every right to judge the earth for a lot, lot longer, wouldn't he? Yeah. 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 Now, verse uh, <clears throat> number 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it or not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth, behold, he is in secret chambers, believe it not. 
For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You now somebody's going to say, hey, he's over here. And somebody else is going to say, no, he's over there. <laughs> Jesus says, no, wait a minute. I'm going to come like lightning. I'm coming out of the east. That's what it's going to be like. All of a sudden, boom, flash, and he's there. It says, verse number 28, For wheresoever of the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that the summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Hey, it's coming, but we don't know when. Uh, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so uh, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew it not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the summing, uh, so, uh, so, so also, uh, sorry, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what uh, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore shall uh, therefore be also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, so then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. And if it, uh, that uh, it, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my Lord delay this coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink uh, with the drunken that means he's hey he's taking a break. Hey, he's not coming. I want you to think about something just for a moment. I want everybody to look up right up here. I think that's where we're at uh, in our modern day of Christianity. Not everywhere, but as a whole, is that spirit. They say, well, he hasn't come back yet. Well, he hasn't come back yet. And they just said, you know what? Uh, enough of this. I think I'll just do what I want. I think I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink. I'm going to just sit back and relax. I'm going to do what I want to do. Who cares what God uh, says to me? Who cares uh, what uh, what the Bible has to say? Hey, listen, I'm going to do my own thing at uh, this time. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do my own thing. But hey, hold on. He's coming. He's coming. Verse 50, it says, The Lord of that service shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then, of course, we got in the next chapter where it also, also talks about the kingdom, but I'm not going to read it. I just want, I want you to listen to it. I want you to look at it. I want you to hear what God has to say. Hey, this thing is real. This isn't fake. It's coming. It ought to create a zealousness. And if we're praying, we're saying, thy kingdom come, Lord. I want to see your face. I want to behold you like I've never seen you before. I, I, I thought about it. Uh, I, I imagined it in my mind. But I want to see you. Thy kingdom come. Let us know when we pray that prayer what's coming. We ought to be zealous while we got time. We ought to be active while we got time. Hey, we don't know when he's going to come back. We know not the day. But hey, he's still coming. That is for sure. We ought to be zealous. It should create a zealousness in our life. Hey, why pray for the kingdom to come? Well, it ought to encourage you because we know that prayer will get answered. Uh, and number two, so it will create a zealousness in, in us in our life. Hey, if you believe this thing, do you believe it? Right. If you believe it, we ought, we, ought, we ought to act like we believe it. Yeah. yeah. Number three, because it means our accuser is cast down. 
This is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> uh, take your Bibles and go to Revelation chapter number 12. Revelation chapter number 12. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Revelation chapter number 12. Yeah. Let's start at verse, verse number 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them uh, before our God day and night. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their own lives until death. Verse number 10. Notice it talks about now is come. Okay? The kingdom has come. Salvation's come. Strength has come. The Bible says the kingdom of our God is come. I mean, that's a present tense. It's, that it's talking about the kingdom has come now. Okay? And of course, we're not talking about right here at this moment. When Jesus returns, his kingdom is there. So that's what, what it's talking about, that future uh, time there. So it says the kingdom of our God is come and the power of Christ. And then it says, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Hey, when Jesus comes back, the accuser gets kicked out. Hey, I like it, don't you? I like it. Uh, that means my accuser is gone. Hey, in 1 John chapter 2, right now, the Bible says, My little children, these things, right? I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Right now, I need an advocate. Hey, I'm, I'm living in the sinful flesh, right? I, I live in this sinful world, this sin-cursed world, right? And I'm tempted and bent towards those things. And by the way, I have sinned, and so have you, right? Probably sinned today, didn't you? I know I have. I had asked God uh, to forget. I had some thoughts just ran around my brain, and I thought, where in the world did that come from? I'm like, Lord, forgive me. I don't know why that even crossed my mind. And so, hey, that's where I'm at. And so often, i got to go to my advocate, Lord, <laughs> Jesus, hey, uh, uh, would you talk to the Father for me? You know that I'm a mess, don't you? Uh, but hold on. We've got, the reason we got an advocate because we live in this sinful flesh, but also we've always got, the, the devil's always up there accusing us. Hey, look what they did. Hey, look what they said. Look where they went. Sometimes even reminding, uh, accusing God to us. But sometimes the devil's coming around and accusing you to yourself, right? Hey, do you remember what you did? Do you remember where you used to be? Do you remember what? You'll never get any better than that. Uh, you'll never do any better. You'll never think any better. You'll never uh, get anywhere. You're like, hey, just give up on this Christian life thing. Hey, you can't have it. Hey, am I, am I telling the truth or what? Hey, I can't wait for the day that he gets cast down. I can't wait that he gets kicked out. I can't wait that I don't have an accuser anymore. Uh, uh, one day, I, I will no longer be the advocate for he will be the educator and the accuser will be gone. One day, I will have to live under the constant pressure of my ineptitude for uh, the indicting voice of Satan will be eradicated. One day, there will be no wrestling in day-to-day -day living for my adversary will be arrested. Hey, thy kingdom come! Thy kingdom come! Thy kingdom come! I can't wait! For that day, I'm so sick and tired of the devil. I'm so sick and tired of his accusations. I'm so sick and tired of his mess that he creates. I'm so sick and tired of his deceit. I can't wait till he's cast down. But the only way that's going to take place is for the kingdom to come. Hey, I don't want you, but you say, well, I'm sick and tired of that. I'm sick and tired of that weight. I'm sick and tired of things coming up in my past. I'm sick and tired of all, all, all this is going on. Well, if you're sick and tired of it, then pray for the kingdom to come. Thy kingdom come. We're talking about our prayer life now. Our prayer life. And you say, Pastor, you pray for it? I'm praying for it more now the more I study. <laughs> I tell you that. I tell you that. That's what this is for, right? Let's increase our prayer life. Let's, let's adjust our prayer life. Hey, that was this is the Lord's model prayer. And he says, after this manner, pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom Hey, you know it's a prayer that's going to get answered. That ought to encourage you. Hey, it ought to create a zealousness in you. That's why you do it. This ought to encourage you. If you pray for the kingdom to come and he comes back, the accuser is cast down. I love it. Anytime the devil gets whooped up on, I love it. Yeah. I'm talking about prayer. Heavenly Father, help us in our prayer life. And 
Now this thing can show you your keys. Help us to have it on our heart and mind. From morning to evening, wake up. Maybe when we wake up in the morning, you give us that breath of life, and you give us another day here on earth. Maybe we'll look up to the heavens, cry out and say, Thy kingdom come. But in doing so, Father, I pray you create in us a zealousness throughout the day for your work. How should we do without a preacher? We know, Father, that you have given the, the Great Commission to the church. May we see uh, we see the rise of some things. We see greater signs. There's no doubt about that. In the entire world, an unrest, an uneasiness. <coughs> A spirit across the entire world is very cold, it seems like, uh, to the things of God. And uh, no doubt this is the spirit of God. <coughs> but as I look at it, Lord, it encourages me. It challenges me, but it also encourages me. Someday I'm going to watch my adversary, my accuser, get cast out. <coughs> Father, I pray you'd send your son quickly. <coughs> Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Thy kingdom come. In Jesus' name I pray. I